Okay, so today what we're talking about is I, I actually haven't done one of these in a fairly long time. So it's time for me to talk about develop mode and this is gonna be develop mode sort of from the ground up. Um, it's been a long time since I've done like an intro to develop mode. Uh, so I think today would be a good time to talk about that. Um, I've sort of, develop mode is, you know, in many ways develop mode is one of our more powerful uh, tools in ACDC. Um, <clears throat> so develop mode is um, unique in ACDC. Uh, and what it does is allow it you, allows you to um, non-destructively uh, edit, uh, you know, raw images. Uh, but I want to make a caveat here and say that develop mode can also edit uh, almost all writable files. <laughs> so uh, today we're going to be looking at what develop mode can do, and we're going to be editing just a JPEG image. But I just want to stop and mention that uh, one of the benefits of develop mode is that um, you can edit a raw file. So say you take a photo with your Canon camera in raw format, uh, and you put it onto your hard drive, in this case, let's say you put it into your pictures folder. Um, what you can do is you can take that image, you can bring it into develop mode. And what develop mode is gonna do is because raw images are not writable. <clears throat> and what I mean by writable is that, um, so when you take, uh, when Canon creates this file format, which is Canon raw, uh, it, it doesn't allow, it's a proprietary file. And what proprietary means is uh, basically they have the rights to that file type. Uh, and so uh, what Canon doesn't do is it doesn't tell a bunch of different companies, including ACDC, hey, here's everything you need to know about uh, saving and writing and extrapolating information from our raw file. They just don't do that. So what programs uh, like ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate have to do is they basically have to create a workaround. And what, um, what we do in develop mode is we actually create a sidecar file. And the sidecar file is the file that actually contains the edits to when you're making edits to a raw image in develop mode. And so what develop mode does is it doesn't change your original raw file at all. It actually just creates a file that ACDC references when you go to make edits to that image. Now, in the future instance where you're quite happy with your developed raw image, in the case that maybe you're doing wedding photography or something like that, uh, and you're like, I'm really happy with this image, I wanna send this to a client. What you're not gonna do in this case is going to send them the raw image file. Um, all, I mean, you could, uh, but without the uh, ACDC and without the um, that, that sidecar file that ACDC creates, your client will never be able to see those changes. So what you would do in this case is you'd save your file down as, uh, save as your file as a, um, as a, uh, uh, editable in this case, or a writable file. Many people save down their images, especially if they want to save them in high quality to something like a TIFF file, and then they'll send the TIFF file to their client. Uh, but the main purpose I want to say is that ACDC Photo Studio Ultimate uh, in develop mode, and this is the true also for professional, um, uh, our professional product, is the develop mode is designed to edit all different types of files, but with unwritable files like that of raw files. What it does is it creates the sidecar file that it references when it goes, when you go to make edits to that file. But um, we don't have to worry too much about that. We'll, we talk about that in, in other workshops. We talk, we, I, I had a whole workshop where we just talked about that as a, as a topic. But today what we're gonna do is we're just gonna demystify how to do things in develop mode. We're just gonna sort of talk about what the functions of develop mode are, uh, what it's good for, what's really uh, a beneficial tool. Uh, and things that we're gonna talk about today are things like you know, making simple edits to your image files, making selective edits to your file. Um, and then also we're gonna talk about things like development presets and snapshots. Um, snapshots and development presets are incredibly uh, powerful. Uh, and I really wanna put a lot of emphasis on that. Uh, Olo and uh, Antonio. <clears throat> so let's start. And then uh, what we'll do is I will take Q and A as they come and as they pertain to what I'm talking about. And if there's any QA that I can't get to or don't pertain to what I'm talking about, I'll save some time at the end so that we can discuss those things. Um, so without further ado, let's talk about develop mode. Uh, and in order to talk about develop mode, we technically have to be in manage mode because that's the default mode in ACDC. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to a landscape folder, okay? And in that landscape folder, I've got a bunch of images, but I've chosen landscape image number 27 here to be the image that we talk about uh, and use today as a reference. Um, what I want to point out is that when you're in develop mode, there's two icons that develop mode uh, controls. Um, in this thumbnail here, let's actually expand that thumbnail. I want to make that a bit bigger so you guys can see better. Yeah, that's better. So this image right here, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, there's these two development icons. Uh, so the one on the left here is an icon uh, indicating that, um, that this image has been developed. Um, and you will see this in any image that you develop in an ACDC. Uh, all this icon uh, is showing us is that we've made some changes to this image and it's, uh, it's a sort of like a mental cue uh, for us to note that, that those changes ha have occurred. A lot of people don't know about these icons, and that's why I bring them up, is because they're basically shorthand uh, at illustrating to us uh, what's happened to this file. Um, so this development icon will appear on any file, uh, whether it be writable or non-writable, uh, raw or non-raw. Uh, and then the icon that appears to the right of it is an icon uh, called the snapshots icon. And snapshots is a function of develop mode that allows you to save essentially uh, a state of your progress uh, during uh, the development process. And what that does is it allows you to actually uh, reference that snapshot at any point during your development. So you can save multiple snapshots to a single file. And then what you can do is you can go like, oh, I actually preferred those edits over the ones I just made. Let me just navigate back to that snapshot. We'll talk about that in more depth as we talk about snapshots in a moment here. But my point here, and just to summarize, I really just wanted to point out these two icons because they pertain uh, exactly to develop mode. And they're uh, really key in to understand what's going on with your file. Um, those of you who are familiar with ACDC will uh, note a couple other icons. Uh, one we showed earlier uh, as it pertained to uh, Sheila's question is this icon right here when I just made this metadata change. So when I clicked on the red icon up at the top right hand corner here, you'll note that there's this little embed icon that it pops up in the center between these two icons. Uh, this icon indicates to us that we have unsaved metadata. I just want to showcase that, um, that these icons pop up as you interact with the file. Um, yeah, that's all there is to know about it. It's just be mindful that these icons will change as you interact with your file. Hi, Ken. Hi, Jose. Um, I'm just going to set the embedded metadata back to clear and we'll continue with our file. Okay. So let's actually, now that we sort of understand those development icons, let's uh, go into develop mode and I'll explain the layout itself. Develop mode is actually looks at first value, uh, first glance, I would say. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, but it is not complicated. And I'm going to demystify it a bit for you today. So um, uh, develop mode has a bunch of different locations. Um, so in this case, we obviously get clean and clear. Uh, we get our uh, preview image that is in the center here. Uh, there's a couple different preview controls, uh, most notably the zoom function just down to the right here. Uh, and then also we have the show original uh, is just right here. You'll note that the image that we're looking at has some active developments, uh, hence that icon that appears on the bottom left here in manage mode. The reason why I say that is because we're actually going to recreate these developments uh, to this image. When I clicked show original, uh, what it did is it actually showcased what this file looked like originally um, before any developments took place. Uh, and this is this image after that developments have taken place. And it's pretty su uh, substantially different. Uh, it's quite actually monochromatic in its uh, original, <laughs> excuse me. And it is a bit um, kind of underwhelming from a, a, a saturation perspective. And then we just cleaned up the file using develop mode and these were the final results. So I just wanna showcase that this, were, this is what we're gonna sort of recreate today. I just wanna showcase first and foremost what we're actually looking at when we're looking at develop mode. <laughs> So underneath the preview panel is the film strip. Uh, you don't have to use this. Uh, what the film strip uh, does is it gives you clean, quick, and easy access to essentially that list in manage mode. So 
if I navigate back to manage mode, we'll note that these images to the right and left of our image correspond exactly to the images that we're seeing when we navigate to um, develop mode, we can see on the thumbnail here, or sorry, in the film strip here. So what you can do is you can actually navigate to your next image in your folder and development uh, develop it as you go through. Um, this is a, a pretty handy little function too, because when you go through the process of developing a file, you can create a preset that you can actually sort of run that preset on, um, on another image. So provided that your images look really similar as they might for um, specific shoots, maybe if you're a sports photographer, or like I said, you're a wedding photographer, you can make one preset and then save that preset and then apply that preset to one image in your film strip and then move to the next image in your film strip and then apply that same uh, preset to your image and then just tweak some values accordingly. Uh, we'll be talking about presets in a little bit. I just wanted to showcase that. What I might do is I might actually just pop the film strip. Uh, let's see here. I might just close the film strip because in this case, I'm not going to use it. Uh, and it's kind of clouding or uh, adding a bit of visual clutter to uh, the, the, um, uh, the interface here that I don't want to showcase. So what I'm going to do is instead of closing it, um, what I can do is I could just click uh, this top icon uh, on the far right hand here. And what this does is it actually just temporarily hides uh, the film strip. You can see that when I click on it, uh, the film strip is hidden. And when I click on it again, the film strip pops up. This is just like a quick hide in interface that doesn't have me interacting with um, the view panel. Uh, so if I just wanted to for sure get rid of film strip and not see this again when I navigate back to develop mode, I could also close it. Um, and then what I could do is I could bring it back using panes. So note that when I uh, use the X icon on the film strip. It disappears from the uh, the panes folder here, and film strip is no longer checked. Um, so there's a couple different methods of interacting with different uh, panes within ACDC. Uh, I'm just going to click that hide bottom panel, and that actually also hides my info panel, which is right here. The info palette would contain information as it pertains to your image. So in this case, because this image is a stock pho photograph, all that's illustrated here is the size uh, of the actual file itself and the dimensions. Uh, Georgina, it is not the same as the image basket. Um, it, it's more of a, the image basket is like a temporary place that you can interact with, with files that have no, um, no correlation. So they could be from different folders, they could be from different search, uh, search functions and stuff like that. Uh, the film strip itself is actually referencing exactly the folder in manage mode that you navigated to when you clicked on your landscape image. So um, the, uh, the image basket itself as a functionality is uh, much more loose. Uh, much more easy to uh, interact with because it keeps those images in their um, their respective uh, locations on your hard drive. But uh, the film strip, which is located down at the bottom of develop mode, absolutely pertains to the folder that you're in. Uh, so I just want to make a note that they are not the same thing. Um, okay, so I'm just going to hide the film strip here and by process also hide the info palette, which would contain things like ISO and your shutter speed, that sort of information. So what that leaves us with is actually what we want to talk about today, which is the development tools, which appear on the left here. And then uh, three functions, the histogram, the development presets, and the uh, history and snapshots function, which I'm going to leave on the UI because I use them quite frequently. And they're actually going to be referenced to what we're talking about today when we uh, you know, demystify develop mode a little bit more. Um, but if you wanted to get rid of these things temporarily, you could do the same thing where you navigate to panes and you could just click them off as you see fit. So if I didn't want to see the histogram, I could get rid of it. If I didn't want to see the development uh, uh, tools, for example, or development presets, or I could also get rid of the history and then finally the snapshots here. And that would leave me with just the development tools and the, uh, the actual preview panel itself. So none of these things are permanent. They're, uh, they're things we can get back at any point. 
Uh, I can bring back snapshots. I can bring back uh, the development presets and I can bring back the histogram if I want to. Um, how do you add the histogram? Is it only in 2021? Uh, no, the histogram is in, it's, it's very much an old function of ECDC uh, and an essential one for most photo editors. Um, so it's possible, uh, Joe's, that um, your, uh, your histogram is just turned off in the paints function. You should absolutely have it, especially if, if you have a version of ACDC that's, I don't know, even three or four years old. Um, yeah, and please, as Sharon has mentioned, uh, if you can just pop your uh, Q&A uh, into the actual Q&A panel itself, it's just a bit easier for me to interact with in the, the chat panel. Um, tilt and crop are available in the development tools, and we will talk about it momentarily. OK, so let's talk about what we've actually changed in this image so that when we go to replicate these changes, we have a better understanding. Um, so actually, to do this, let's direct your attention directly to the development tools. So once again, I will actually use this hide function, and I'm going to hide the histogram, the snapshots, and the development presets. So if we look over on the left-hand side here, we're going to see the development tools themselves. And this gives us a lot of really good information. The information that's important to us is highlighted in this light blue color. And I will talk about that a little bit more. So when you up, open up the development tools, what you probably should have is this general tab open. Um, so there's a bunch of different uh, tabs within uh, development tools. So we have Tune, uh, which applies to sort of the light changes in the image. Um, we have a Detail. This Detail tab contains its own tools, uh, Sharpening, Noise Reduction, Skin Tune, and Chromatic Aberration. And what Detail does is it applies changes to the tonality of your image. Then you have the Geometry tab, which as you can see here has lens correction, rotate and straighten, perspective and crop, as well as vignette correction. And geometry, uh, per, um, all of the tools uh, pertain to things like rotating your image or cropping your image uh, accordingly. Um, and keep in mind too, that because uh, develop mode is a fundamentally non-destructive uh, tool, uh, while these things, uh, you can make these changes to your image, uh, note that there, at any point you can revert back to, back to your original image and that these are not uh, final uh, destructive changes to your image. Uh, and then you have the repair tool, which contains things like heal, clone, blended clone, and then there's just a red eye reduction here. Uh, but the most important tabs that we're going to be talking about today are tune, and we can stop and talk a little bit about geometry because they're going to be one, the tools you use most, most often. So underneath tune, detail, geometry, and repair, what you'll notice that there's uh, these little um, icons right here, uh, a row of icons rather. And these icons are really important. Um, so first and foremost, we have uh, this icon called the Show Clipped Shadows and Highlights icon. Um, this icon is actually very useful, and I would familiarize yourself with it. Uh, I'm going to turn this on, and we're going to talk about what it's changed. Um, so when I click Show Clipped uh, Shadows and Highlights and note, it, note that it's now turned off, turn on rather, and we know that because it's blue. What appears on my image is basically uh, the highs and lows of our image. Um, so clipping <clears throat> is when your image is either overexposed or underexposed. Notice that when I turned it on, parts of my image went this green color. They have this little green indicator that exists on this image here. What the green indicates to me is that uh, that pixel is true black. Um, so that pixel value has, um, uh, is, has no information in it, uh, meaning that it has no saturation, it has no uh, variation in, uh, in hue because it's uh, completely a dark uh, pixel in this case. And so what happens when we adjust uh, our, lighting, uh, our lighting in our image, and let's, for example, really blow out our image, uh, let's uh, dramatically increase the exposure, You'll notice that as I increase the exposure, parts of my image will also go, let's add some fill light to really screw this image up here. There we go. You'll see parts of my image uh, have uh, start to get this little um, red indicator here. 
which means actually the direct reverse to that of the green indicator. What this showcases to us is that these parts of our image are um, are overexposed, meaning they're they're too bright. Um, so when you see parts of your image that are either this uh, this red icon, or so rather this red part here, or you see it uh, where you get this green part here. Uh, what that's indicating to you is that uh, that those parts of your image are either uh, black or they're white, uh, and they have no uh, no sort of uh, information in regards to their saturation because they are uh, they're they're a full contrast in this case. So all, all the 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 takeaway from this is try to avoid having images that uh, have these massive blowout uh, in terms of their you know uh, black or or whites, uh, and the reason why is because you're actually losing uh, information in your image. You're sort of uh, you're adopting more contrast and you're losing uh, um, valuable pixel information because they now only contain a white or black. Um, that's just a note. Obviously, there's lots of different. Um, there's lots of different uh, types of uh, photography that want to sort of utilize higher contrast. As a general rule, though, I think it's uh, best to avoid, and uh, and you can get into the habit of seeing those pixels by using the show clipped shadows uh, icon right here. Um, now, when I unclick that, obviously, what it shows me is an image that is way too dark and kind of spooky. So, what I can do to reset those values is because I was interacting with this general panel here, I was interacting with exposure. What I can do is I can actually click this reset button that exists on the top right hand corner here. And what that's going to do is it's going to reset the values in that field. And so when I reset those values, it goes back to their stated original values. And this is a good reason why develop mode is so non-destructive is because I can just reset these at any point during the development process. So that's the show clipped icon. And then we just briefly touched base in regards to the reset. But you'll notice there's some other icons here. Before we talk about those icons, let's talk about all of these tabs that exist underneath. So the tabs that I mean uh, in this case, or I, uh, rather they're more drop downs, is the general function, the white balance, the light EQ, the color wheel, the tone curve, soft focus, et cetera. So, excuse me, all of these, um, these elements that we can open up, uh, all of these have universal application on our image, okay? Which what that means is that when I make a general change, okay, to my image, uh, as I did with this exposure, right? What I'm doing is I'm changing the whole image. I'm not changing any selective parts of my image. I'm adjusting the exposure on the entire image. And the reason why I make a note of this is because these adjustments, general, white balance, light EQ, color EQ, color wheel, tone wheels, et cetera, they apply to our whole image. Um, and we're not choosing any of those elements. Uh, when we want to choose those elements, we'll use the brush tool. We'll use the gradient tools that sort of thing. So I, I want to be clear that these tools uh, within the tune tab, uh, they, uh, they're applying to our whole image. So with that being said, uh, let's discuss uh, which ones we actually have on, which in this case, I'm just going to reset general. The ones that we have turned on are indicated by these little reset buttons and active button. So next to the white balance dropdown, is a little indicator that allows me to reset that group, similar to how we interacted with general here. Then there's a cog wheel that will allow us to save that individual preset if we want. And then we have this little indicator right here, which is a deactivate function or activate function. So if I deactivate this white, what it's going to do is it's not going to reset the values within the actual white balance uh, field itself. But what it's going to do is it's just going to visually hide those changes from my image. So you can see that when I uh, deactivate this group, um, the image becomes much cooler. Uh, and the reason why is you can see that I've increased the temperature by 44 in the temperature slider here, which dramatically increases the temperature in image. You'll notice that it becomes far more yellow. Uh, it's much warmer than it was before. What this isn't doing is resetting those individual fields. So what this does is it gives me a, a way to um, basically pause and view my image without that change. Um, but it doesn't actually reset the parameters themselves. 
To reset the parameters, like I said before, I would just click on the reset field and note that when I click this, this actual number, this 44 will change. Uh, it's gonna go back to zero. And as you can see, that white balance uh, field is now empty, meaning that there is no reset function anymore and the deactivation is turned off entirely because there's nothing to deactivate. Um, so I'll just set that back to 44 because that's where I liked it. So white balance has been applied to this image. Light EQ has been applied to this image. We know that because of the blue indicator for the deactivate group and the refresh. Um, so in this case, we've lowered the shadows and we've slightly increased the highlights. Also applied to this image is the color wheel. Let's have a look at what it's looking for. Now, again, I'm gonna make these changes as I go through on my image so we can talk about these individual changes. But all we need to know right now is the color wheel is selecting the color green, this kind of greenish yellow, yellow field here. And we're dramatically increasing the saturation in those fields. So all we're noting is that color wheel is turned on. And lastly, tone wheels are turned on and we've made a shadows adjustment to our image and post crop vignette has been uh, turned on and we've created a black vignette that goes to the edges of our image here. Um, so why don't what we do now is let's basically reset this image to its original values entirely. And then what we're gonna do is we'll remake these changes and we'll make some geometry changes to the image as well. So we can talk about that briefly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the development presets. So we can apply a preset with a whole bunch of information uh, to a variety of different images. So you get an idea of how that function works. And just to be clear that development presets is probably the same, I mean, it and actions are the single most powerful functions within ACDC. Uh, actions was an enormous uh, change to the software that, uh, that they added about four, four years ago. And development presets uh, have been around for a little bit longer, but they are so, so, so powerful. And I will show you why. Uh, they can save you, uh, I mean, hours is, is putting it lightly. Uh, they can save you a lot of time. So I'm gonna navigate back to manage mode. Now, um, you'll note again, I'll, or rather, I would like to note again that this image has those development changes and that's and a snapshot um, saved to the image. Uh, I can go in and I can delete that snapshot and I can go in and I can, um, you know, reset all of the development presets back to their original values. Uh, what I can also do though, is I can actually right click on my image and I can go to process and restore to original. And what this is going to do is it's going to restore uh, this image to its original values, or original um, de development values. And so when I said earlier in regards to ACDC's um, non-destructible uh, functions, especially when it comes to develop mode, this is something that I'm talking about. Uh, so right again, I'm just going to right click on my image. I'm going to go to process and I'm going to go to restore to original. And, uh, and I'll click restore to original. It just asks me, are you sure you wanna restore the file to its original state? And this action cannot be undone. And that's okay, I would like to restore it to its original state. And so what happens is the image, as you can see, uh, if we go back to develop mode, is restored to its original state. Note that there are no refresh icons. Note that nothing, it, there's no active or deactivated groups because there's no changes to this image. The one thing that hasn't changed our image is the uh, existence of this snapshot. Um, so if I click on this snapshot, I should be able to reference a variety of changes to my image. Let's see here. There we are. So that snapshot was saved during the development uh, uh, functions. And what the snapshot does is it saved some information um, to the file that ACDC had, in this case, information about the white balance, information about the light EQ, information about the color EQ, even after I uh, factory reset all of those, um, those development, uh, development actions on our image. So I just want to note that the power of snapshots to, to basically save some instances of development on an image. Um, when I go back to manage mode, uh, I can choose to save uh, these changes, which sure, why not? 
why don't we save them? And you'll note that that development icon returns because now we've loaded a snapshot on our image. We've indicated that there are development changes. Just while I'm talking about it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this image and show you another way to reset the development changes. So we can go in and we can reset just using these individual reset parameters, or we can just click the master reset to reset the defaults up at the top here. And when I click that, it returns back to our original image. Now, I think if I save this, it'll still indicate developments. Yeah, uh, it's only when I click process and restore to original, am I actually going to get that development icon removed from uh, the image. Uh, snapshot icon can be removed when I delete my snapshots from my image. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's make some developments, talk about snapshots a little bit more, and make a preset. Um, I just want to make sure that everyone sort of understands the non-destructive nature of develop mode and sort of the methods by which you can return your image back to its original state. Uh, and like I said, even make uh, development adjustments along the way that make your image better. So I'm going to click on this image. I'm going to bring it into develop mode. And let's sort of recreate those changes. Uh, we're not going to use the snapshots. We're actually going to use these parameters themselves and talk a little bit more about uh, selective adjustments while we do so. Um, so this one we know. Uh, we knew that we made a white balance adjustment of about 44. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my white balance adjustment here. And again, that adjustment applies to the whole image. So that changes our whole image here when I go to uh, increase that. Um, we know that in light EQ, we actually made the shadows, I think, a bit darker. So what I'll do is I will bring my shadows down uh, to about negative 10 here. And I'll actually bring my highlights up a little bit. I'm going to bring them up to about four. And I'll leave my midtones the same. These are just some very subtle adjustments to the light in this image. Note that you can get a little bit more uh, specific with your uh, light EQ changes, your um, lighting changes in your image, by going to the standard mode or the advanced mode within this. Some uh, tools will have multiple modes. Light EQ is a really good example. Um, this isn't a workshop on light EQ itself, so I'm just going to stick to the basic methods, but we have talked about um, light EQ standard and advanced functions in depth in, uh, in other workshops. So what we should do now is we should go into the color wheel. And one of the things that I think was a fairly significant change to our image here is just a dramatic increase in these greens. Because these greens were, uh, were pretty um, desaturated. And so what I want to do is I actually want to saturate them. One of the cool things about the color wheel is I can actually rotate this myself manually using the color wheel. But what I can also do is I can click on parts of my image or rather hover over them. And you'll see that little green ball spin around this wheel. And that when we go to click on something, it'll actually move the wheel itself. You can see me moving the wheel by clicking on different parts of my image. So when I click on the leaves here, it brings it into the sort of yellowy green range. When I click on the background, it brings it into this desaturated blue. When I click on the log here, it brings it into the red field. So if I really want to hone in and choose exactly, I can use the color picker to do so. But um, I'm just going to click on the green area here. We wanted it slightly between yellow and green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the saturation. So I will increase the saturation by about, actually, we're going to increase a lot. I'm going to increase it about, oops, let's go up to 83. And I'm going to slightly change the hue because it's a bit yellow for my taste. So maybe what I'll do is I will move the hue slightly to the right. And when I do that, what it's going to do is it's going to shift the spectrum into blue. You can see all of those leaves change color when I slide this over. And what it's doing is it's the color wheel is selecting, in this case, the range of color uh, that I, I've indicated, which is this yellowy green. And when I go to slide this uh, hue meter, it actually shifts that color to its corresponding hue. Um, but I don't want it to be too aggressive, so I'm just going to change it to about seven here, which is actually a 
considerably more green than it was in the center. You can already see that's a pretty substantial change. So actually, let's deactivate it to show you the, uh, the before and after. So this is the before and here's the after. Huge change to our image. I still think this is a very believable change to our image and that this definitely could be what I perceived while I was out taking this photo. Um, and so I, I like that change. I think that's a, that's a reasonable one to make, one that is within the realm of, of plausibility. Um, and it's a nice one. I like that. We get a lot more uh, visual, uh, visual key to that. And actually, we have a bit of more of a center ground now, which is this region right here. We have a focal point in our image now that we've just introduced a bit more color to it. So the other changes that I made to my image was I think I made a tone wheel change. So I go into the tone wheels, which is just underneath color wheel here. I'll scroll down to the shadows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually introduce a bit of blue, light blue rather, to my shadows. Uh, not enough so that it's going to offset uh, that, um, that warming change that I made to my image, just introducing a little blue to the background. So the shadows is definitely not the foreground uh, because most of the foreground is much brighter than that. The shadows is going interact, to interact with these sort of elements here. Tone curves. Um, is uh, is very new, uh, and as uh, Brian pointed out, it's not made its way to the Mac product yet. It's still on PC. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this uh, within the blue spectrum here in the shadows, and I'm just going to apply a little bit of opacity. And you can see that when I apply the opacity, uh, or rather saturation, if I'm fully saturated, you'll see the my whole image will appear dramatically fairly blue. But if I really low that, lower that saturation, it'll only apply in a little bit here. And we can add a little bit. So uh, I don't think I'm going to interact too much with the midtones or highlights. I'll leave them as is. I just want to add a little blue to the shadows. Why don't we go ahead and deactivate this just so we can see a little bit of a before and after which I think gives this image a bit more contrast and also a bit more depth of field somehow. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'll leave that as is. And then the last thing what I will do is I will just adjust the post crop vignette. Um, and I'm going to reduce my post crop vignette to around negative 70. Now, uh, and that's just going to add a little bit of a black edge. Now, if you already have a vignette around a natural one that your camera took, you can actually vignette correction by adding white, uh, which will um, sort of fill light that area. Uh, in this image, I don't have a, a natural vignette, so I'm just going to add one. Before we add the selective adjustments to our image, let's make a snapshot. Um, so the snapshot in this case is going to contain all of these adjustments so far. So um, to make a snapshot, a snapshot is really easy. All you need to do is make sure that you've made some adjustments first and foremost, which in this case we have. We made a white balance adjustment, a color wheel, tone wheel, and post crop vignette adjustment. Um, let's go ahead and navigate over to snapshots, which is on the right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just add one, just simply create our, a new snapshot. So snapshots are proprietary to the image, meaning that uh, snapshots will, you can't reference a snapshot on another image um, that you've made in a different image. Uh, that's more the domain of presets. Snapshots are just um, are just something you can open up in that, that particular file, so in this particular image. So let's make a new snapshot. And to do that, I will click Create New Snapshot. And what I'll do is I will name this, let's say, um, Tune Adjustments. And I'll hit OK. And now you can see that Tune Adjustments has been added to my snapshot reference panel here. Um, and if I really wanted to showcase this function, let's go in and we'll make a dramatic change to our image. Let's go in and uh, let's like lower the exposure quite a bit. And let's go into the color wheel and I don't know, let's make those green area of my image, let's make them more blue. So if I wanted this look for some reason on my image, I create, create another snapshot now that I've sort of made some new adjustments to my image. So what I'll do is I'll navigate back to snapshots, click on the plus button under the new snapshot section here, and I'll, click, uh, I'll call this, um, I don't know, it's called Moody Forest uh, and hit 
OK. And you'll note that Moody Forest has been added. And so now what I can do is I can actually go back and forth between these snapshots. Um, so before, so this was the tune adjustments. And I can go back to the Moody Forest by clicking on a snapshot here. And it'll just take a moment to apply and load the snapshot. So you can see that I can sort of go uh, back and forth between these different states on my image really quickly. So what this enables you to do is make some adjustments to say one of your wedding photos and go, yeah, I really like this image, but maybe if I try this, you know, and do something different, then what you can do is you can save both of those and decide which one you like better just by clicking on those different snapshots. Um, Owen asks, deactivation of your individual adjustments applies to individual adjustments. Yep. Show original would be the whole image adjustment if I'm correct. Um, okay, so I just want to note, show original is just a preview button. So when I click show original, what it's going to do is it's going to show me my image before I, I've made any adjustments to it. Um, show original, however, is only a toggle, uh, meaning that I can toggle it on or off just by holding the button. But it doesn't actually interact with uh, resetting any of these adjustments. The area that you reset individual adjustments, as Owen pointed out, is this little reset uh, button right here. These little reset buttons that are next to the individual adjustments. To reset the whole, all of the adjustments, including detail, geometry, repair, tune, any brush settings, anything that you have, you would just click on this master reset that's up at the very top here. That's actually above all those little miniature uh, reset buttons. So if I wanted to reset this uh, back to its original uh, values, I would just click on that. And note that this image um, looks identical to what we were showing when we showed original. Uh, and that's because when I clicked on show original, it was just showcasing me my photo prior to any adjustments. But importantly, show original is just a, like I said, it's just a toggle. It's just to showcase you a preview of that, but it doesn't actually reset any of these parameter fields. Here's a cool thing, because Owen asks me to reset this thing. Uh, well, now that I've reset my, my all of these developments, well, I could go in and painstakingly try to reset all those values, or I could just click on my tune adjustments over here in the snapshots function. And after a second or so, it'll reset all those values. There we are. So not only did I get to reset it using the proper reset on the left-hand corner up in the developer tools, but I actually got to make use of my snapshots that I had saved. Does that answer your question, Owen? Um, I just want to make a point that the show original button isn't quite like resetting uh, those things. Uh, those, there's different parameters. All it's really doing is showcasing you your progress as you work. OK, so we've made some snapshots. Um, We've talked a little bit about uh, making multiple variational snapshots. Actually, maybe the one thing I want to do to tune adjustments, or maybe one more thing I would like to edit, is let's make a uh, let's make a geometry change and let's make a selective adjustment. Because we've talked about global adjustments, but we haven't talked about selective adjustments. So within the tune tab, we're going to brighten up and add a bit of contrast to this road here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the brush tool. The brush tool will enable me to actually paint on adjustments rather than having them be applied to my uh, whole image uh, in a universal way. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the brush tool here. And let's actually apply some contrast adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush on, uh, let's increase contrast. Oh. Uh, and before we do that, let's make a note too. So when you clicked on the brush tool, or say you're in the gradient tool, or in the radial gradient tool, um, you'll notice that the development brush tool pops up. And it's the UI or the user interface, this color here is actually slightly brighter than all of the general tabs uh, and, and such below. I just want to make a note that the develop brush itself has different tools than that of the, uh, the general applications, the universal application store image. So when you click on the brush tool, you're not actually interacting with soft focus or tone curves or the general tool or white balance. What you're interacting with is the develop brush's own tools. So things like nib width right there, 
things like the feathering of the nib, things like smart brushing, things like exposure adjustments, things like saturation, things like contrast in this case. Note that the brush also has a color EQ panel and a tone curves panel. But I, I just want to make a point that um, I don't want to expect people to click on the brush tool here and expect to be brushing on light EQ changes. That's not what the brush tool does. The brush tool has its own tool sets. So if you want to brush on light EQ changes, what you might want to do is you might want to click the brush and then actually interact with the tone curves. So I can interact with darkening my image using tone curves, if that makes sense. Um, now that I've made a really gaudy change to my image, um, what I can do is I can look at the brush strokes tool here and I can actually show brush strokes. And you can see when I click on this little show brush strokes icon right here, it actually shows me the parts of the image that I've interacted with. And in this case, I'm applying tone curves too. Uh, I'm just going to reset the brush because I don't want to actually apply tone curves to my image. What I want to apply is a general change of just a bit of contrast. Uh, so 37 contrast. And let's increase the clarity a bit as well. And uh, I'll maybe add a tiny bit of fill light. And what I want to do here is I actually just want to paint on these adjustments just on this road here. Um, and I can actually, I don't actually need to have show brush on here. I can just paint it on. And you can see that this is going to change my road here, I getting a bit of clarity. It's also warming it up and there's a bit more contrast on that area of the road. And then I can just go through and paint these changes on. And where I really want to see them is on this bush here, because I want to use this as a focal point. So now when we look at our brush strokes, I'll just click on show brush strokes again. You can see the areas we've missed, which are these ones right here. And that gives me a very center, uh, or rather a very centered look uh, on, my, on my image here. So I'll click that off, just make sure I'm not, there we go. So now the, we'll reference the show original again. So we'll show it uh, the original image. And then this is after the general applications, things are the universal applications like white balance, color wheel, tone wheels. But now we've also painted on a bit of clarity in this area right here. So what we can do is now that we've painted on some clarity, we can actually add a new snapshot. So we'll call this tune adjustments plus a uh, brush. And I'll hit OK. And you can see that I can alternate between the tune adjustments uh, that I had earlier. Just wait for them to load. And the tune adjustments with the brush that I just made. See, come on, finish loading. There we are. So you can see the difference between those two as you click on these snapshots here. Um, so uh, this the brush tool works very similar to that of the gradient tool. So I can actually add a brush tool and a gradient uh, separately. So I can have both running on my image at the same time. I'll just showcase the gradient function uh, right now because they're very similar. So what uh, the gradient function does is if you click the show gradient mask, what it does is it'll apply its adjustments to wherever that red area is here. So in this case, uh, we're applying a gradient to the background forest area. I'll just unclick show gradient mask there. And then what we can do is we can add a variety of different uh, general uh, adjustments here, or we could do some color EQ adjustments. So I could change that green. Actually, we know that that's more in the blue spectrum. So we can maybe change the blue, desaturate our image back there. Or maybe, uh, oops, we can add, yeah, maybe we can just change the hue back there. So I'll change it from, hmm. these are not looking like they're having too much effect, which means I could be interacting with the wrong color. Either way, we could expose our image back there, or we could 
increase the saturation or we can increase the vibrance back there. We could even cool it even more if we wanted to. So you can see how interacting with the gradient function allows me to, uh, to specifically choose uh, larger parts of my image as well. And I could just reset these values as well. How to delete brush strokes that are not applied to the correct area? OK, so this is a really good question. So let's go back into our brush strokes. And let's just brush stroke on this tree here, OK? So we don't actually want this tree um, to showcase those uh, adjustments here. Like this isn't ideal that, uh, that this tree has the same contrast to that of the path. So we can do that uh, in two ways. Uh, the first way we can do that uh, is to simply just right click instead of left click. So when I left click, you'll see that uh, an area will be included. Uh, so I can right click to sort of paste or rather to undo that area. Um, so that would be the first way. Uh, the second way you could do is to just clear all the brush strokes. Uh, but note that when you clear the brush strokes, you'll lose any of your good brush strokes that you actually want to keep. Uh, the last thing you can do is you can reset uh, the whole develop brush itself, but you're going to lose uh, not only your, your pre existing brush strokes. Uh, by the same way you 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 lose them using clear brush strokes, you actually also lose any uh, adjustment parameters you've set. So if you use this refresh, it's going to refresh your contrast and clarity and fill light back to their original values as well. But simply by right clicking or left clicking, that's the fastest way to just get rid of where you don't want it. Just note that be sure that you're interacting with the correct brush because you can also have multiple brushes. For example, I have this one brush right here, which is this one right here. But if I add a second brush and I say brush on this tree here, what I can do is then I can uh, increase the fill light on that tree. And you'll see that not only do we have this brush right here, but we now have a new, pardon me, new brush right here. So just be mindful of which brush you're interacting with, because if I want to get rid of this brush, what I'm going to want to do uh, is click on this brush and either clear it or just erase it in this case, like I would right there. And that's not going to interact with your other brush at all. It's just going to clear this one brush, which you can see a little bit. If I hover over, there's a little bit left right there. Hopefully that answers your question, Brian, but there's a couple different methods of removing brush strokes, uh, right clicking, refreshing, and using the clear. <laughs> okay, so what's left to talk about is I guess we made some snapshots, which is good. Uh, let's make a preset. I think that's kind of what's left over. We've talked about selective adjustments. We've talked about universal adjustments to our image. We've talked about um, we've talked about the layout extensively, um, and we've also talked about uh, the development icons. So the last thing that makes sense would be to make a development preset. Um, okay. So I'm just going to close the brush by clicking on the brush icon itself. All of the changes are still applied. We still have tune adjustments plus brush in the snapshots field. Let's make a preset. So a preset uh, is um, a series of adjustments that you really like. And what that's going to do is it's going to enable you to take those adjustments that you really like, and it's going to apply those exactly the same parameters to any other image. Um, and you can do that by doing this. So we want to create a new preset, but first of all, we want to create a new category, I think. So I'm going to add a new development preset category. And I'm uh, there's already a whole bunch. You can see all black and white color creative. These are just default presets that you can delete if you want. Uh, but I'm not going to interact with any of them. I'm going to create my own. So I add a category. And you know what? Let's just, let's just call this, um, you, uh, I don't know. Let's call it Adam's category or uh, Adam's presets. So I'm going to create a new category called Adam's Presets and hit OK. And you can see that my, uh, my uh, preset category has been added. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to add a preset directly to this uh, box. So I'll right click and I'm going to click uh, Create Preset. And just that again is I'm going to click on my category and I click Create Preset. And I'm going to create my own preset. Now, this big window pops up, and this looks intimidating at first, but I promise you it's not, OK? So there's two ways of thinking about this preset. Um, basically, what you can do 
it's kind of an unnecessary box actually <laughs> I think about it but because it assumes that you don't want to include certain things so let's talk about it basically I have all these little box these miniature box selected okay so with these boxes selected what it shows to me or what it tells me is that hey we're going to pay attention to these metrics these variables when we go to adjust for a new image or when we go to make apply this preset to a new image but if we think about what actual presets we have in our image or what adjustments we have in our image we only have a couple so let's talk about them i'm going to unselect all of these just to showcase this so we have white balance okay well where's white balance it's right there in color so that's one of the adjustments we have so we have light eq that's one of the ones that's under general and lighting lighting eq right here what else we have color wheel tone wheel uh, we have post crop vignette. Where's that guy? Post crop vignette. And then we have uh, we have some brush changes. So we have tuning brushes. Uh, and that's it. I don't think we have any geometry adjustments yet. We have nothing like that. So so really, when I'm saving a preset, I'm really just saving these elements. Now consider what you're going to actually be doing to your next image because maybe one or two of these wouldn't be correct obviously what i could do is i could just select every single one and uh because many of these have no adjustments to them so rather i have no photo effects on my image i have no exposure adjustments i have no fill light adjustments so what that means is when i go to apply these presets to a new image nothing's going to happen in any of those fields but here's one that is so what do we know about our image? We know that this selective area here, we did that using the brush tool. Well, my next image, uh, it might not have that same content in that area. So maybe what I don't include in this list is actually the tuning brushes. Uh, and the reason why is because I don't want there to be like bright and contrasty area right there on my next image. So maybe I don't include that and I actually turn that off uh for my uh for my next image uh so what i'll do is i'll maybe not include the selective adjustment of tuning brushes uh because i want to adjust the general applications i can include it i'm just choosing not to because i'm worried that maybe a new subject would be uh overly contrasted or overly uh, increase the clarity too much in that area so we'll just name this preset i'm going to call it uh i'm going to call it the same thing uh tune adjustments and um and uh there's no brush so we don't need to add that and i'll just hit okay and you'll note that when i open my little window here my adams presets window the tune adjustments pops up maybe while we're doing this what we could do is we can create a preset that does include the tuning brushes so we can see the difference on our, another image so i'm going to call this one uh tune adjustments oops tune adjustments plus brush and note that I'm uh, including every single parameter in the, this time, including tuning brushes. Uh, so that is really the only one I didn't want in the previous one. So this is, this could be checked off, but I want it in this case. So I'll hit okay. So I got two presets here. One is tune adjustments and the other one is tune adjustments plus brush. So now I can officially navigate away from this. I can go back to manage mode. I can save my image. And what I can do is I can now apply this preset to another image. Let's choose another image with the same sort of lighting criteria. Yeah, sure, this one. I'll just move this one down next, next to my other image here. And what I can do is I can apply this, this preset. Now I can go into develop mode and apply the preset using this panel right here. So I can go tune adjustments, boom, it's been applied. I can go tune adjustments plus brush and you'll notice that that area that I didn't want to have that application applied is, is now applied there. So hence the reason why I did it one without uh, and one with, uh, reset those values. But the other thing I can do is I can actually select a whole group of images. So I'm gonna zoom out on my whole folder, folder here, and I'm just gonna select the first, let's say uh, that many images uh, in, in my, um, my folder here. And what I can do is I can apply a batch preset. Uh, and so this is that powerful function that I was talking about. Because in this case, I've selected uh, selected 26 files. What I can do is I can go to batch function. I can go to batch develop up here. 
And then what I can do is I can find that batch development, which I'm, I think I called tune adjustments. I can click on tune adjustments. And what I can do is I can actually run this adjustment on all of my images. So I'll play press develop here. And so what it's going to do is it's going to develop these images using those that criteria, those uh, universal criteria that I created in that one image. And what you might notice is that the development icon is appearing on the top left hand corner of all these thumbnails, which indicates to us, uh, first and foremost, that those developments uh, have been applied, right? Um, and that now um, they, they will have that criteria within them. And so just a, a really important note, uh, this again, once again, is really important to say these are non-destructive adjustments. So I can undo, I can uh, revert these changes, I can restore to these images to their original values at any point. Development changes are non-destructive. So I just want to make a point of that because uh, when I go through and apply all these development changes to my images, it might seem like that's what's going to that that's what those images are going to look like forever, and that's not the case. They can be uh, they can be restored at any point. So it's just about done. And but the reality is, if this was a wedding photo shoot and I had a couple different lighting changes to make on them, and I uh, with the exception of maybe some selective adjustments in one or two images. Well, I just saved myself hours of work of going in and uh, you know selecting the correct adjustments and blah blah blah. I just did it in a couple moments by going and applying those changes. So let's go into a very different looking image. I'll go into this tropical looking one here. I'll go to develop, and you'll notice that this image, much like the other ones in the develop panel here, has these same uh, adjustments. It has the white uh, white balance adjustment. It has the light EQ adjustment. It has the color wheel located on green. It has the tone wheels, the tone wheel applied to the shadows, and it has the post crop vignette. What it doesn't have is the brush adjustments. And the reason why is because we made a note to apply tune adjustments preset, not the tune adjustments plus the brush preset. And lastly, because we were talking about previously, if my image had any geometry functions that I wanted to adjust, for example, I wanted to rotate my image. I could rotate my image. And if I wanted to crop uh, you know, parts of my image, I can do so within the same function, which will reduce the over overall size of my image. Now, when I go to crop my image, uh, so let's click done, save changes to the image, save. You'll note that my image here is pretty different than the one I was looking at earlier, right? Uh, again, this might look like it's a destructive change now that I've rotated my image, but if I navigate back to geometry, you'll see that that's not the case. This can be reverted at any point, uh, and I can return my image back to its original values. So that is it for development uh, today. That pretty much covers everything. Again, development is not a hyper complicated mode. Uh, it's actually quite simple. Um, and I just, the reason why I wanted to break it into these parts is because I really think it helps you understand how much development has to offer. Uh, you know, we didn't talk too much about repair in detail today, but they have, they have their own tools and, and, you know, they're worth exploring. Uh, I just wanted to give you a really a good understanding of sort of the, the general reason why we want to use develop mode and sort of the basic uh, and more advanced functions like things like presets and snapshots and understanding what these buttons mean because obviously there's a lot going on in develop mode. Uh, and then just really understanding and making use of uh, batch uh, developments. Now, uh, I'd just like to open up to just any general questions. If you have them, just fire them my way because that's it for the sort of structured part of the workshop. So other than that, thanks for participating. Uh, I'm going to just go into all my images here and I'm just going to reset them back to their original values by going to process and restore to original. And that will restore all these images. It'll take me a moment to restore them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, I'm glad you think it was cool. I, I like, I really like develop mode. I think it's a very valuable tool. It's super easy to use. A lot of people go into it and they go, oh, I, you know, I'm not really sure I know what all these tools do. I think a really common mistake is that people um, sort of think that the brush tool works in co conjunction with the uh, universal tools and it isn't. Um, Carl, a oh, very good talk. I'm glad. Uh, Steve, is the snapshot saved in the 
Sidecar file, it is, yeah. So even when you're creating, even when you're editing a development file, oh, sorry, even when you're editing a writable file, um, in this case, a JPEG, the developments aren't saved to the file, uh, but the snapshot, is, the developments aren't saved to the sidecar file, but the snapshot absolutely is. It's just, you can't see this, uh, the sidecar file because it's hidden. Um, yeah, but they are, uh, the snapshots are saved there, yes. Um, okay, thanks, learn some new features, great. Thanks from Northern Germany, I'm glad, Barbara. Um, thanks for the tips and tricks, you're welcome, Joy. Uh, thanks, where are the originals saved? Uh, Klaus, they're also saved, are they saved within the sidecar file? I think they might be not saved in, that's a really good question. They might be saved in the sidecar file, but a part of me wants to say that they're actually saved in a different folder that's like slightly more, hmm. I'm trying to remember. I do know this. Um, well, let's figure it out. Okay, I'm going to click on an image here. I'm going to make a new folder, new folder, uh, test folder. Where are they located? Copy that in here, make a development snapshot really quickly. Let EQ shadows. Add a snapshot. Okay, back to manage mode, save. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, if I go to filters, sort, view, choose details, uh, view, um, tools, filter, advanced filters. Ah. Okay, so what I did is I clicked on filter and I went to advanced filters. And when I did so, it brings up this configure filters here, which says show hidden files and folders. Uh, and then it show XMP and we'll just show all the all here. So when I do that, yeah, okay. So that's where the originals is saved. You can see that right there. And where is that snapshot located? Is this the XMP? No, it isn't. Oh, that, that's it right there. Yes, that pertains. Okay. So your question was, uh, where are the originals saved? So in uh, you don't you shouldn't do this and you don't need to do this, but if you go to filter and advanced filters, you can bring up those hidden folders that I was talking about. And the original is saved within this folder called originals here. And then in this XMP file right here will be your snapshot. Um, and it's right next to your landscapes there. Uh, bingo, bango, that's where all those, those hidden files are. I'm gonna turn those off. Um, Thorkel asked, when uh, HTC Max is gonna be as functional as the Windows version? Yeah, so that's a really tough question to answer. And the reason why is because our PC product has been in development for a lot longer than our Mac product has been. So a couple of years ago, um, uh, I think about two years ago, um, ACDC made a commitment to have, uh, in essence, a, um, uh, a committed Mac development team. Um, keep in mind, ACDC is not a huge company. Uh, we're not enormous. So when they did that change, uh, they basically made a commitment to continue the update, the product, uh, over like year after year. Um, and uh, in the last couple of years, the Mac product has been a lot of architecture and infrastructure changes to make sure that we can get it to where the PC products are. Um, but I would imagine that it will be uh, several years uh, before all of the features line up and are exactly the same. Uh, there is no hard date that I can just go, here you are, Thorkel, this is when the Mac product will be the same as the PC one, uh, because it just doesn't exist. And the other thing is there's certain aspects of the Mac product that are being uh, developed independently of the PC product, meaning that there's certain things that the Mac ha product has that they're like, this is a really cool feature, we can do this, and we haven't had a chance to maybe apply it to the PC product either. So there's no hard date for you, I don't know. Uh, all I can say is that the Mac product is um, yeah, is being developed and there's a commitment to continue to develop it and to get it to where the, uh, Mac, uh, the PC product is. Hi, Adam, in light EQ section, what is an auto button? What does it do? 
auto lady Q does kind of what you think it do. Uh, basically, it sets it to its own sort of perceived values of what the image should look like. Um, I don't love it. Uh, I think uh, personally, I prefer manual. Um, but you can click on different parts of your image to set that auto in different ways. Um, sometimes it, you might get awesome results with it. Uh, basically, when you click on your image, uh, you're getting an automated automated adjustment uh, based on sort of the color and uh, that um, you know the tonality and the the brightness of your image. Um, yeah, play around with it. Uh, I don't love it, uh, but uh, automated functions are never as good as the eye. So. Um, Hi, Adam, Manfred asked. Like, OK, we did that. Uh, Richard said, thank you. This is very helpful for a complete novice. Well, I'm glad that you, you got a lot out of it, Richard. Uh, Brian asked, great. Let's hope snapshots and wheels come to Mac. Agreed. Gary, thank you. You're welcome. Terry, I needed this. Thank you. I'm glad you got a lot out of it, Terry. General question asked Steve. Any plans to bring out a version of ACDC for Linux in the future? I haven't heard of anything. Maybe shoot me an email and I can ask our developers, uh, which by the way, my email is aprice at acdsystems.com. Uh, I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I, yeah, I don't know whether or not they've thought about doing a, a Linux product, but uh, if you find if you shoot me an email, I might be able to get a, an answer for you in regards to that. Um, the reason I didn't see geometry, is there a very little contrast between the letters, white and background, light gray on the tabs? Oh yeah, I mean, they are a bit hard to see. I will give you that. That's the other thing too. I just finished uh, designing a uh, gemstone, which is our other product. Uh, and gemstone had a complete UI overhaul uh, that obviously that UI overall hasn't been applied. UI meaning user interface, hasn't been applied to um, uh, ACDC. And I don't necessarily think it will be applied, but we were just taking a sort of a risk and a, an attempt to sort of redesign the UI in a new product and see if people like it more. Uh, if you want to see uh, the UI redesigned in ACDC, uh, please shoot me an email uh, because I there's things that I would like to redesign in ACDC, but um, many users are familiar with the way it looks currently and we would need to sort of really commit to uh, explaining to uh, people in the company that that would be something that, that people want to see. So if you want to see the U, U, changes to the UI, shoot me an email and just uh, let me hear what you have to say. Brian, Adam, thank you once again for an educational presentation. You're welcome, Brian. Uh, Louise, as always, a very nice talk. You're most welcome, Louise. Uh, develop and edit have a lot in the same adjustments. That's true. Why not always use develop for these because it's non-destructive? Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, are you doing anything that would require layered adjustments? Uh, are you making a composition image? If so, you can't do that in develop mode. Um, develop mode is probably going to be 99% uh, of the time what you do as a photographer, as somebody who is an intermediate or um, even a novice photographer. Uh, as soon as you want to make like um, layered uh, adjustments and composition images, develop mode can't do any of those things. You need edit mode for that. Uh, and we've talked about those in, extensively in workshops. I mean, I've done some pretty crazy things in edit mode that you just can't do in develop mode uh, that come down to the use and manipulation of layers. Jason asked, can you do presets in edit mode? No. You can do actions, which work somewhat similarly, uh, but they are different from presets in many ways. And they don't share the same level of non-destructibility. Curiosity question, have you tried this app out on the cloud? I haven't personally, Carl, let me know if you have any questions about that. That wouldn't be a question for me, that'd be a question more for the developers, but if you have any uh, concerns or anything like that, shoot them my way. Alex, thank you for a very interesting presentation. You're welcome. Uh, Yvonne, uh, we'll be doing a session on detail. I can do a session on detail. We've done a session on, um, we talked about detail extensively when I did a workshop on uh, repairing an older photograph, uh, which you can find on our uh, YouTube page. But I can always talk about it more. Raymond asked, can the shape of the brush tool be changed from round to square or rectangular or oval? No, that's a great feature suggestion. Currently, it's only round with the adjustment of feathering. Uh, please shoot me an email uh, if you want to see that feature, because then I can fire it off to our, our developers. That's kind of a cool question. In general, what that brings open is uh, the ability to adjust or change the brushes in ACDC in general. 
Uh, and that's a function that obviously a programs like Photoshop have. I would love to see the ability to have differently shaped brushes in ACDC. So fire me off an email if you want to see that. Again, a price at acdsystems.com. Kin asked many thanks. Great talk. Can I do the adjustments to raw files, particularly by Canon? Yes, you can. Um, as I mentioned earlier in this workshop, just note that those changes will not be saved to the file, the raw file. And the reason why is because raw files are, um, they are not editable. They're not writable files. So what ACDC has to do is it has to save those adjustments to something called a sidecar file that ACDC references whenever you open up that raw file. But the answer to your question is, can I do the adjustments to raw files? Yes, you can do them. It's just not as simple as you think. Uh, it, it doesn't require anything on your, your end. You're going to be interacting with the files the same as I did today. I just want to make sure that I'm not answering your question dishonestly, because technically speaking, no raw files, whether it be from Canon or Olympic or whatever, any, um, you know, any of these uh, cam uh, uh, camera companies, uh, none of those uh, raw files can be interacted with directly. You cannot save to a raw file. You can only save in reference to one. Um, Brian, thank you once again for a super educational impression. You're welcome. Uh, Sharon there in the hidden folder, we did talk about that. Thank you from Francine, save me hours of work with the presets. I'm glad, Oh, that's, you're the first person to ever say that. So I really appreciate that. No, no one's ever said like, thank you for saving me hours of work. So I appreciate that. Um, in the browse folder, as we did earlier, if you do adjustments on a JPEG file, will the snapshot be applied to any JPEG file? No, just that one file you're working with. You must use presets if you want to get, if you want to reverse engineer that snapshot on another file. Um, no facial recognition in the Mac product. Is that a question or a comment? Are there any previous webinars on AC which I can review? Yes, let me find you them. This is us. Tons and tons and tons of workshops. If you go to our workshop playlist here, and I think we have some from Managed Mode from the ground up was our last one. And if you go all the way down to our first one, there's Managed Mode, but there's literally hours of workshops on here. Um, okay. Right, we're further down here. Um, thanks, Adam. A great session, which will be help us better a quick result. I'm glad that, that you did. Uh, we do have a seminar. We actually have several on edit mode. Let me see here. Um, I would recommend checking out for edit mode. Um, I would recommend checking out uh, Workshop Ultimate Preview Part 1, Blending, Colorizing, Add Photo. I would check out Layers and Masks. Um, I think there might even be Composite Images. You can check out Composite Images as well. Yeah, those would be the two best ones for that. In fact, actually, that's one that I haven't done. It. There's literal Edit Workshop, but that one's a bit older than the other, so I'd check out the newer ones. Um, if you have scanned an image and it's not coming out as you want, can you use develop to fix it? Scanned an image. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't you be able to? Yeah, it's just an image file like any other. If you've scanned an image <clears throat> and you want to like adjust the lighting qualities and things like that, yeah, use develop mode. Sure. As long as the file is editable by ACDC, I don't see any issue there. Oh, and you're welcome. Ray Raymond, it's a price at acdsystems.com. You dragged a photo from one place to another. That's cool. Can ACDC then remember the photos automatically so they appear in the new order in Windows Explorer? I don't think Windows Explorer will remember that same order. Uh, let's find out. That's a good question. So I'll go back to my other folder here. I'll take landscape two and I'll move it after landscape 14. How's that sound? And if I go to pictures, landscape, 
Landscape 2 is not located after Landscape 14. So it's only remembered by ACDC. So if I navigate away from this folder and then back into this folder, it's after number 14. Um, but it doesn't, uh, the, it, it's only remembered in ACDC. Um, let's see here. Uh, is there available on YouTube? It's, yes, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel uh, soon. Uh, probably within the next uh, day or so. Uh, to save changes to the file permanent, of course, is there a way to save a copy? Yeah, you can just save as, uh, and that will save a, uh, a um, that will, yeah, save as or save a copy will, will work. Uh, is there a plan to incorporate a panorama technique in ACDC? Please email me if that's something you wanna see. Uh, it's been highly, highly asked for, um, uh, but I think they, uh, the developers need a, a certain, um, number of people to request it. Uh, Klaus asked, I have a DJI droner with Hasselblad camera. I use the raw fill in development, but how am I sure it is the best translation? Um, okay, this is a hard question to ask, answer. So, <clears throat> so the developers of ACDC, um, when they create development preset, it's based on, uh, because, okay, so uh, your, your camera, right? The camera maker, they don't approach ACDC and they don't give us any information as to how that raw file should be interpreted. So what the developers of ACDC need to do is they need to actually interpret those things to the best of their understanding. Um, they need to, that's, so when we go and we add a raw, uh, when we add a raw um, preset, or when we add a uh, like a way of interpreting a raw using uh, you know the uh, using develop mode, um, so when you go to something like this, for example, in develop mode, and I go to geometry, and I go to uh, lens correction, and you'll note that there's a variety of different lens profiles in here, different makes. Um, so those things are all interpreted by developers interacting with um, basically uh, information that the developers have gained from, from outside sources other than the actual, uh, uh, um, other than the actual uh, uh, proprietary owner of the, the camera, camera make. So the answer is you can't be certain how best that translation occurs um, because uh, because the, the, the company that, that makes that particular raw file is not approaching ACDC, it's not approaching Adobe, it's not approaching uh, DxO, it's not approaching Affinity. They're not approaching anyone and giving people's interpretation. So, uh, so the answer to your question is, at the end of the day, you still have to like make adjustments to an image uh, that, are, um, that work in correlation with your eye, how you saw the image, but nothing is gonna be uh, perfect in that case. Uh, and the reason why is because the, that proprietary information is held by, uh, held by the developer of the camera. Ian, thank you for the answer and a great session. You're welcome. Um, oh, good, Dud. Okay, perfect. Uh, Boss asked, is there a reason that the Photoshop plugins are only available in the edit mode? Compared to Lightroom, that would be, uh, more of the same way of, way of work. I actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, maybe email me and I can find an answer for you. Uh, Gary asked, um, can a developed raw file be exported as a JPEG TIFF? Yes, in fact, I mean, that's the only way that they can be exported. Uh, they can't be exported as a raw file with those adjustments. So you have to export them or save as rather as a JPEG or TIFF. Um, when you do so, it's not gonna actually change your original file in any way. It's just gonna save another file or it's going to export another file in this case. Klaus, I'm glad you thought that was a good reply. That's a really hard um, question to answer. And if you want to know more about that, maybe email me because I can always like shoot that off to one of our developers. I know my uh, one of our lead developers, Daniel, he's the one who actually deals with those raw development presets. And so he's the one who's constantly trying to track down that information. Uh, and maybe I can uh, get more information from him. But the answer is, it's just, it's one of those things where they just don't provide that information. And so you have to work with what you're given. Um, when, Bonita asks, is it preferred to use these tools in edit mode instead of the develop mode? 
Yeah, I answered this question earlier for another user. Um, I would say, honestly, if you're a if you're a photographer, right, and photography is your thing. So I like taking photos and say you're an amateur photo photographer, okay? And you're like, I like taking photos of my family and I like going on vacations and taking photos and I like managing them in ACDC and I want to tweak a couple of them and like send them to friends or upload them to my Instagram account or something like that. Develop mode for all that, 100%, okay? Develop mode, 100%. But if you're like, okay, I'm fixing images. Now I need to fix blemishes on people's faces because I need to do that for my industry. Or am I working on uh, composition images? Am I working with layers? And am I trying to uh, take particular parts of my images to blend them with another image? Or maybe I'm taking, um, for example, I'm, I'm getting rid of individual hairs on my image, or I'm adding hair from one part of my image to another part of my image, or if I'm um, creating, uh, or I'm like putting a plane in the sky in one image that doesn't have a plane there, or if I'm like, uh, if I'm in, in general making a compositional changes to an image file, um, or if I'm, I'm, I'm creating literal graphic design, yeah, that's all 100% edit mode. You can't do any of that in develop mode. Um, that's pretty much the difference. To what extent are you using the product? Um, are you going to be uh, editing your images and uploading them to a place like Instagram or sending them via email to your friends and family and stuff like that? 100%, you can do that in develop mode. As soon as we're talking about making layered changes to an image, as soon as we're talking about taking particular parts of my image and moving them to other parts of my image, or as, or as soon as we're talking about combining multiple images, that's edit mode, 100%. Okay, Gary asked, you said exporting a raw file, no changes will be included in the exported files. Exporting a raw file. Oh, I see what you're asking. Because you said exporting a raw file, no changes will be included in the exported file. Okay, so basically when you go to save as a file, right? So say you've made a bunch of edits in develop mode and you go to save as, um, what you're gonna do Okay, is you're going to um, you're going to you're going to save a new image that doesn't have any of those. It's you're 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 making those changes to your image and you're saving a brand new image that's treated as an original object. So basically, it's not going to have those. It's not going to have like when you. It's not going to have all these different tune adjustments and stuff like that. It's just a new 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 image. Um, so when you export or save out an image, um, uh, let's see here, and the raw file does not apply to sidecar. Yes, so the sidecar file would only be applied to the original raw image. It won't be applied to the exported JPEG or TIFF file, right? Um, it's only, get this, it's only when you start to make development changes to your TIFF or JPEG file, say, you know, because most of them can be written to that, that file. But as soon as you start to make like sidecar files or sorry, snapshots or something like that to that file, that's when it creates a new sidecar file. But the, the answer to your question is, when you go to save a raw file as something else, okay, as like a TIFF or JPEG, that, it, that, that image is now treated as a new object. It doesn't have a sidecar file. It's only when you would do something to it that would create a sidecar file that does. Now your original image, still contains a sidecar file. Because like I said, raw files are non-destructive, uh, A. Uh, and B, um, they, uh, they can be restored to their original qualities uh, at any time by right-clicking on them and going to process, restore to original. Uh, but it's still, that original file is still gonna reference that sidecar file. The new file is not gonna have a sidecar file until it needs one based on whatever your, your actions are. Uh, Benita, you're welcome. Alex, when is the next workshop? Uh, that's a good question. It is August 24th, probably Tuesday the 4th. No, probably will be on Thursday the 16th. I'll have that up on our site soon. Boss asked, when you apply, say, an action to a number of files, will the new file be a permanent copy or do you need to save them separately to keep the changes outside ACDC? Um, so when you create it, I don't have any action. Well, actually, no, I've got some actions. Let's run some actions. So when you run actions, actions are a function of edit mode, uh, not a function of develop mode, uh, which is different from batching, batch develop, OK? When you run an action, so let's just run an action. Let's go uh, color 
darker sky action, okay? When I play this, what's gonna happen is based on your options. So darker sky output options. Um, right now I have it set to rename modified image and place them in source, source folder. So the source folder is this folder, the pictures landscape folder. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna rename that. So basically it's gonna create a copy, place them in this same folder with a new name. OK, you can directly overwrite the selected files, but note that that would overwrite the selected files. And then you can also just cr uh, create an action and uh, make a copy in a new location. Um, this is again, this is different from batch development. This is a whole new thing that uh, that boss asked about. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to create a copy in this case by its uh, its default settings. Stan asked, thanks for the informative session. Does ACDC have some kind of recommended flowchart or manual that suggests a preferred developer edit process, such as suggested by these tutorials? Why LightEQ, for example, instead of other options? Uh, ACDC doesn't have that. Um, the days of uh, online manuals are, are, are long over. Uh, but the actual answer to your question is like, there's so many different ways to use ACDC and none of them are correct. Um, because different users have different workflows. Um, but I would recommend if you're, if you're, if you're me, uh, I, or rather, sorry, I would recommend having a look at some of our workshops for different workflows. Uh, but basically having an understanding of the product is going to, and by walk, we're watching these uh, um, workshops and by watching tutorials, um, that's going to basically give you a better understanding how to use the pro, uh, product overall. And then from there, you can create your own workflow. Robert asked, is develop mode any more useful than edit mode if you're not interested in saving presets? Is develop mode any more useful than edit mode if you're not interested in saving presets? Yeah, I mean, for one, it's very simple, right? Uh, that's one of the benefits of develop mode. It's simpler than edit mode. Um, you might get a lot out of being able to work with masks, provided that you understand how to use them, Robert. Uh, I don't want to assume your your uh, your uh, functional understanding of edit mode or develop mode. Uh, it really depends on what you're doing with your images. Like again, are you making like are you making compositional images? Because that's really what edit mode is going to provide you. Even if you're not saving pre presets, develop mode is like pretty powerful and doesn't necessarily like it isn't very complicated. So yeah, I don't know. It really depends on what you're doing. I would say develop mode is still a very powerful tool without saving presets. Um, how powerful a computer do you use today? Processor, RAM, HD space? Uh, that's a good question, Stan. Shoot me an email and I will get my stats to you. They price at acdsystems.com. Sheila asked, uh, if you shoot a portrait picture, can you, can you somehow make it print in a landscape format and vice versa? Uh, Sheila, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that question, actually. I've never tried printing using ACDC too much. Um, shoot me an email. Gary, sorry to ask more about this, but if you shoot, shot all in RAW and want to send a post-process image with all changes made to someone and saved, exported as JPEG, they cannot see a processed image. That would make no sense to me. That is not what I'm saying. <clears throat> okay, you have a RAW image. You make a bunch of development changes to that uh, that file. Okay, ACDC is going to put those those adjustments into a sidecar file. Okay, so literally what goes in that sidecar file is like okay, it's going to go Gary increase the exposure by three. That's logged in that sidecar file. Okay, then what you're going to do is once you've made a pretty image, you're going to save as or export the image. Okay, as a JPEG, TIFF file, whatever. OK, that new file is going to contain all of those adjustments. It's going to look like a brand new, original, adjusted file. What I said earlier is that file is not going to contain its own sidecar file because that file is now considered a new, albeit adjusted file, right? In the sense that you've, you've made adjustments to your original raw file and you're exporting those adjustments to a new file, OK? That's treated as a new object, and uh, it's going to contain all of those beautiful adjustments of your new, new, new image. And then when you go to send that to a friend, they're going to see uh, the image as it appears, which includes those adjustments. 
Uh, sorry if that wasn't clear. Um, okay, I'm, did you understand, Gary? <clears throat> no, no, and it's it's my fault. It's these are complicated things. Uh, you've asked some good questions, but yeah, uh, basically when you're interacting with raw, there's just like one other step involved, right? Because that step is okay. I've made all these adjustments to this image, but because they go to the sidecar file, um, or because rather ACDC has to interpret to interpolate those changes through the sidecar file. What it requires you to do is if you want a hard copy of those uh, that adjusted raw file, you need to save it as um, you need to save it as a as an as a new file, a TIFF or a JPEG, something that's flattened, right? Uh, that is a writable file, so that uh, the, you can see those changes uh, that you've made um, and send it to a friend. Uh, when you yeah, it's it's only in ACDC that you're going to uh, you're going to be able to see those sidecar adjustments. As a note, and this is important too, um, so you, you have ACDC, you made a bunch of beautiful adjustments that are now saved in that sidecar file to a raw file. If you exit AC, uh, ACDC and you actually just bring up that file, okay, in Explorer, so you navigate to it in I don't know pictures folder wherever you have it. If you navigate to it, if you look at it. Uh, and this, and the rest, we're still talking about the raw file, okay? We're still talking about raw file, not the, not the new exported or saved as file. But if we look at that file, um, <clears throat> it, in Explorer, it's probably not gonna look like you've made any adjustments to it because your Explorer, uh, the finder in this case, or whatever, uh, you know, the folder thing, uh, this isn't going to reference that sidecar file. It's only ACDC that references that to present you those adjustments. Hopefully that explains things to you and you know, makes a bit more sense. Um, with that though, it is 5.30. It's been one hour and one half hour. I'm going to end this workshop today. Uh, as always, if you have any new, uh, any questions that I wasn't able to get to, please email me. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll have a new workshop on the workshop page. I'll add one uh, right away, but I imagine it'll be the 16th of September. Um, so uh, yeah, let me know uh, if you have any questions. Uh, please subscribe to our YouTube pa uh, channel if you haven't already. Uh, so our, our YouTube channel is ACDC Photo Studio. And I will talk to you next time. I will talk to you next time. Thanks, everybody. I'm probably going to mute my mic, uh, and I'll close this in maybe about five minutes, just so you have a chance to grab my email and uh, that link if you need it. Take care. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you soon.